altar is a structure where people pray and use for religious ceremonies. It is an elevated surface with a flat front, a sacred place for worship of God. The use of the altar predated the law of Moses. It was first mentioned in Genesis 8.20, after Noah left the hack and built an altar. After this, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, and so on, at one time or the other, put up an altar for God. An altar is a sacred place where uh, prayer, gift, sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices are offered to God. Celestial altar, a place of Fear, a place where God resides. When Papa Oshofa was talking about seven heavens, we are made to understand that this altar is the seventh heaven where God is residing. The Bible says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. Now, amongst all denominations, Celestial Church of Christ is the only church that God gives the grace, this divine grace, to have this. No other church was given that grace. Celestial Church of Christ were given the grace to have a complete altar compared to other denominations. Right from the exemption, God has given to Papa Oshofa of blessed memory uh, that we should have an altar whereby we can be praying to God, whereby we can be offering our thanks to God, whereby we can be offering our spiritual uh, sacrifices unto God. So Celestial Altar uh, is a replica of the heavenly altar. According to the book of Revelation chapter 1, from verse 13 and 14, it told us about uh, the seven candlesticks in heaven and the description was exactly uh, what we had in Celestial Church of Christ and what we still have of today in Celestial Church of Christ. If you look at our altar, it's so peculiar to what the Bible has described in the book of Revelation, why God was, uh, was spoken through is uh, an angel to uh, 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 apples to John, why he was at uh, the Isu or Pasmos in the book of Revelation. Uh, when Papa Oshofa left uh, the wilderness, he didn't even plan to even have a church. If you read the constitution, this is the constitution of Celestial Church of Christ in my hand. If you read the constitution very well, he, 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 he didn't plan to have a church but because he, he was a member of a Methodist church. So, but by the time the Holy Spirit, uh, Spirit started working in him, and God started using people differently. Some people, you know, come up uh, uh, through the advent of the Holy Spirit uh, upon them, were the one that uh, uh, described how the church would be. Like everything we do in this church, by, by the inspiration of the, Almighty, uh, of the Holy Spirit. So the, it was in one day when they were trying to worship that the Holy Spirit ministered to someone that there should be uh, there is need for an altar, and that was how the issue of altar came. And since when it came, it, it has been like that all to, uh, uh, to, to, to today. It wasn't as if the day he started, the, uh, the, uh, he received the uh, impartation of the Holy Spirit that uh, he introduced the altar, no. Out of all other churches I have known, denominations that cost across the whole world, apart from the Catholic Church, the only church that has an altar as described in the scripture is Celestial Church of Christ. And when we look at it from the beginning, what does the altar stand for? The altar stands for the holiest of holy, where the presence of God is being made manifest, where God used as a channel to speak to men. And since the time God decided not to descend onto planet Earth after the death of Moses, he created an altar and put the Ark of Covenant there. And anytime we see the Ark of the Covenant in the altar, it signifies the presence of the Spirit of God in the altar.
And that is why I keep on telling people, apart from the Catholic Church, which I know very well that has an altar, it is only the Celestial Church of Christ out of every denomination that I know that has the holiest of holy. And it signifies the presence of God where men can look up to and offer their supplications and prayers. And God in his infinite mercy will answer wonderfully and miraculously. So the altar is not the place where a woman can go into. The altar is not the place where you are unholy, you come on going to. Like the celestial doctrine says, if you want to conduct service, you need to sanctify yourself for three days. Don't, for, don't forget Exodus 19 and 20 when God wanted to meet the children of Israel. He told them, sanctify yourself for three days and on the third day I will come down. So if you are going to lead us into the presence of God in Celestial Church of Christ to be a service conductor, it only means you have to sanctify yourself from Friday and be holy until after the service on Sunday because you are leading us into the presence of God. And the altar is without blemish. The altar is something that has the aura and the presence of God. I'm not talking about any other altar. I'm talking about the altar prepared in the name of God. All these men built altars and worshipped the Lord at them. The altar at that time was a genuine desire to give oneself entirely to the Lord as a result of the work God has accomplished through them. There were instructions on how the altar would be built and mode of sacrifice. Celestial Church of Christ is divinely descended. As such, the creation and use of altar were divinely given through a prophet called Maunyon. After being consumed by the Holy Spirit, given lots of spiritual injunctions, which include some hymns, it was Maunyon who described, with the help of the Holy Spirit, that we should worship with seven candles, and also took a piece of wood and drew out the shape of the candle holder. Maunyon told how in heaven a pot of incense was being swung, accompanied by the song Yara Sara, and translated into Yoruba, Eton Fitila Mimola Toronwa, meaning Kindle the Light. He also gave the instruction that a bus be built, which will be called Mata. At the bottom should be kept the cross and a stick, which is the symbol of Christ's covenant, with the founder, topped by candles for use at the altar. Like I referenced the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. The Bible told us the description of the heavenly altar, how it looked like. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, from verse 12 to 19, you can read it. And like I said at the beginning, that uh, the kind of altar we are having here in Celestial Church of Christ is a replica of what uh, the heavenly altar looked like. So God has not given us all as a man. He is telling us some things. Everything we are doing as a church is like we are you know, preparing us for uh, the kingdom ahead. Oh, uh, there is a song in Sele, So if truly the church is, for, is, is, for, is of God, then everything we are doing here on earth it's like we are replicating what is happening in heaven. Like if you want to kind of bring a new church or you want to establish a church, what makes the church a church is the altar itself. Because the altar, like I said, signifies the presence of God. When we did the renovation of my church recently, I told them, I told the ladies and the clergy working with me, and I told them the way we treat the altar is not what I enjoy so much, and I need to do some corrections about the way they treat the altar. Because I did a sermon like two weeks ago, what you give to the altar, the altar gives back to you. When you hallow the altar, when you make the altar the holiest of holy, and when you honor the altar, then God will honor you. God will respond accordingly. When we talk about the significance of the altar, we are talking about the significance of the seat of God. How significant is the seat of God in our life? When we are talking about the significance of the celestial altar, we are talking about the significance of the sin of God, where God is. Nibiti Christi Jomba, Ni Waju Ite Baba. First and foremost, we need to understand that this church was 
purely concepted by God Himself. And like Papa also has said in Yoruba language, I want to me to kun ele ni won but ijo mi mo ijo bani. That's it's a kingdom. It's a kingdom. All oh, that I just pray to pray. It's a kingdom. You see, you see, like when you say about the altar, the spiritual altar, we need to look at it. Even with this spiritual altar that people were carrying about, there are still a lot of abnormality and carnality there that do not really represent the original concept of God Himself. So God decided it's God's will and God decision that look. This church, this new avenue, this new system of worship that I'm giving to you freely, called Celestial Church of Christ. We need to look at it first from the name, from the point of the name given. Yes, sir. Celestial Church of Christ. That name is more instructive than just ordinary name. That at the end of the day, people might say this church as theirs or that, but always remember that this church belongs to Christ. This church belongs to Christ. So when it, it is of Christ, the image, I mean, the heart, the altar, the tabernacle of Christ, uh, that was broken at the, uh, at the death of Christ, need to re was re enveloped again back physically for the church. That is, when you get there, you are before the King of Kings. It becomes a, an exigma of the presence of God. It is not the table, it is not any, but that altar rep represent and uh, it represents the presence of God, the exigma of the presence of God. We are we need to observe three things that goes where with worship and service. For every worship and service, there must be sacredness, there must be solemnness, and there must be seriousness. The sacredness part of it is the area of the altar where we believe God Himself is sitting. He said, God shall they live in the God shall descend into the sanctuary of His people. God Himself is seated. And we can see this that even after Christ left, after Christ left, he do comes down. Came, he came down. I think one of these days, uh, one of the first one was he encountered Mary. And Mary was about to touch her and touch him. He said, No, touch me not. Touch me not. Because I'm very holy. I'm different from whom you know before. I'm not of, I'm not manly again. I am purely uh, divine this time around. So that thing was specially given to the church. Not everyone can have it. That's why you see the Celestial Church of Christ altar is different from all other altars. And those who, the, the theologians, reflect this to the lost glory of the Israel when the minority departed from them. No church of Christ, but it was given freely to Papa SBG or Shofa for to create the sacredness and the presence of God where we need to worship Him in total humility and sacredness. Many would have misconstrued the CCC altar to be a shrine of a sort, but that is totally wrong. What are the things that make a celestial altar? The first and very important element in the altar is the seven lap stand. In the book of Zechariah 4, when we read from verses 1 down to about verses 14, it's it tells us about what is in the altar. Now we have the seven lampstand. Now one thing we have to be careful about and watchful about is this. Our golden lampstand, the one that was given to the Israelites is different from the one that was given to Celestial Church of Christ. The Israelites were given a golden lampstand. Golden lamps, gold, color gold means perfection. And that is why the people that goes into the altar, the holy of holies in the, in the Old Testament are always only the priests that will go into the holy of holies and there will be something tied around their waist. So if they are not holy, truly, if they are not perfect, they might die in the presence of that altar. Now, when Christ died, his blood redeemed us. Now, God gave Celestial of Christ a silver lap stand it's of a typical celestial altar has to be silver in color. And when candle is lit, it needs to form the triangular color, which signifies the Trinity. It has to form the triangle color. Celestial altars, celestial uh, uh, menorah is not uh, flattened at the top. There are some altars you see in Jerusalem. There are some altars we see in Italy. There are some altars we see in different places. These are different from Celestial of Christ altars. Number one, silver, which stands for redemption, irapada, 
Number two, it will be triangular. Whenever you place candle on it, it will be triangular in shape. It has to be triangular in shape. And this seven lampstand on it stands for the seven spirits of God. And don't forget, the candles we lit on our altar stands for journey of God from heaven down to man. Because God, whenever we light that candle, God descends in our midst to be with us in our temple. I used to tell you other churches can be uh, the, the office or whatever of God, but Celestial Church of Christ is the palace of God. Is the palace of God. And that is why if there are some services that the shepherd has to be cladded in their full regalia before they enter the altar. Services like the new moon service. Services like Sunday, even on some Sunday services, the shepherd is to be cladded in their full regalia before they enter because they are coming to meet the king of kings. A king does not go to meeting with jacket and trousers. He goes to meeting with his full agbada. That is the, 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 the attribute. You see, the physical attribute of a king. So, you know, uh, uh, what was given to us typifies what was given to the Israelites with a slight change because after the Israelites, after the era of the Israelites, Jesus Christ has come to redeem us. So a lot of things will change in what was given to Papa Oshofa. Now we come down to the, what we call the matter. Now, in the Bible, we know about the Ark of Covenant. We know about the Ark of Covenant. Now, Papa was given a box which the altar will be placed upon. In this box, there will be a cross, wooden cross, which typifies Christ. In this box, there will be candle. In this box, there will be turari, the incense inside this box. There should, not, there should be no, uh, I know a lot of people keep a different kind of things in their boxes, but these things are very important to be in our matter. Below the seven candles uh, stand, there is something we call matter. That's a name you know, specifically given to Celestia. This matter means a place where we keep all these sacred things, like our oil and all other things that I use for spiritual uh, assignment in the, in the house of God. The candle holder and the, the cloth that to cover the table that hold the candle holder, where Jesus was inscribed as a logo of God's presence. Then we have the matter box. You see some people look at it, why the essence of the matter box? This box is meant to keep what that, what and the necessary to be used on the altar in order to make it holy. Like take for instance the candle, the incense, the perfume we're going to use for the Sunday will be kept there so that not just everybody will be touching it, seeing it. So it make it so sacred, it make it so holy. So the matter but the box was kept, in, it was there in order to keep things that are to be used in the altar. And these things are just the candles, the incense and the perfume, nothing more, nothing less. What makes a, a building different from a church is the altar. What makes up the altar? You have the table, you have the covenant box, like the days of old, and you have the seven sticks of candle, candle stand, signifying the seven spirit of God. Celestial Church of Christ, and then you have the altar cloth where you write the holy, 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 and the JSH, which has its own meaning, Jesus, Savior of Humanity. And these are the things that make up the holy altar of celestial church of Christ. And don't forget in the book of Numbers and Exodus, you have the lamp that will be lit on it 247 without going off. That signifies the presence of the spirit of God in the altar. So let's say I have, I think, one or two other things that goes with the altar. You have the altar water that is always under the table of the altar that they give to who are sick or as directed by the Holy Spirit. You have the bell and you have the altar of service. It's as simple and as straight. Then when these things are lit, they are sanctified. And when they are sanctified, we, we, we pray for the presence of the Spirit of God by doing our incense and using the perfume that are necessary to sanctify the altar 
as in the days of old. There's no magic about it. It's all about the presence of the Spirit of God. When we look at our celestial altar, a typical altar must have two flowers, one by the right and one by the left. The book of Zechariah chapter 4, when you look at verses 11, it says there are two olive trees by the side of the altar. They are providing oil for the lampstand. So when you see a typical celestial altar, you see two flowers, one by the right, one by, they are not just flowers. They are not just flowers. They, are, they have spiritual significance to that lampstand. And in every celestial church of Christ, a typical altar must have a lantern that is ever burning. Day and night, that lantern must be burning. Every day and night, that lantern must be burning. Because there must always be oil in it. Because we don't know. Number one, it signifies the, 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 the gospel in that church. Because the light of the gospel must keep burning every day and night. That is number one. Number two, it signifies our readiness for the bride, for the, for the, for the bridegroom. Our readiness for that Jesus Christ that is coming. We all saw the story of ten, uh, ten, 10 virgins. Five of them had extra oil, five of them did not have. And when the groom comes, the five that were wise, they went with the groom. Why those ones that are not wise, they were casted away. So this light must be ever burning. This light symbolizing the ever shining light of God, the glory of God that rested. See, the, the darkness shall cover the world, but my glory shall rise up and represent the light of God that continued to shine and shine was there. Another component in the altar is a dish with water in it. We call it omipepe, the altar water. This is very important. The water must always be clean and it must always be there. This water should be without the perfume, should be without, it is not necessary you add perfume to it. The water drawn from the well in the messy land will be in the altar water. Anybody comes that needs something from God, anybody comes with any kind of trouble, anybody comes with any kind of deformity, anybody comes with any problems in life, let them pray with this water and they will see miracles. They will see, they will see what God can do for them.